We're talking to the Young family, and Harry Young in 1962, right up here, is where no-till got started in Herndon, Kentucky, on seven-tenths of an acre. This area right here is a little triangle of an area. That's where the first plot was planted in 1962. John is Harry's son, Alex is his grandson, and Jared would be his great-grandson. So we got three generations here. So I suppose it's getting a little scary now, no towing, with Alex coming around and looking at all the figures and the GPS and the auto steering and everything oh else. What's Alex, it going to be when he's here? Alex he's going to get he's going to get Alex scared now <laughs> with everything possible. that will be yeah. new. So many changes. Al has been a tremendous asset with computers and GPS and the high technology. And you know, you <laughs> made the comment on technology, and Dad has actually pushed me more into the new technologies than vice versa. Yeah. I think it's that cutting edge spirit, maybe. But anyway, he said, well, why don't we try this software? Why don't we try this GPS innovation? And it's been fantastic. Yeah. As we spoke yesterday, we're really putting a lot of that into play. And Jared's coming along into it. He's got three drones now that he can take up and fly around. Yeah. And anyway, we're making progress, I think. It's like putting the hoe in the hand of a youngster, except instead of the tool being a hoe, it's a computer. Right, exactly. And as long as I can say, Al, take that and figure it out, mm -hmm. he takes it and figures it out, and that gives us the profitability from it. That's the future of farming, I believe, Frank. Yeah. What do you think about robotics, Al? Got to be economical, yeah. Um, you know, if they can ever mass produce, you know, small machines, and of course, a lot of regulations, I think, have inhibited progress with drones, which, you know, are good and bad. You've got to have safety. But, you know, if they can ever work through all that, you know, I think they've got a real place, especially in no-till, whether it's, um, I would love the idea of sampling throughout the year. You know, if you could just deploy a fleet and it would sample through the field, tell you where your nutrient levels are, you know, there's a real place for that. But we're a long way from being at the economic threshold for it. Um, of course, little adjustments. We've just bought a planter with hydraulic downforce moving up from pneumatic, and I'm real excited about that. And, but as far as big steps, I um, really like to see drones and ground robots really work into the, to the system. Well, I'm with you. If you can't pay for it, you better not do it. And I think once it becomes economically feasible, I remember the calculator, first calculator I ever owned was a Texas Instruments, couldn't do half of what my iPhone does, and it cost over $100. You can buy one just like it for $5 in Walmart. Now, <laughs> if we could get the cost of it down so that it's actually feasible, I think it's a great idea. The, you, you would know more about your fields. You could actually go to it and treat those things. We hear a lot about site-specific farming. What you really need is a plant-specific farming. Every plant it doesn't care what happens to the plant across the field. It's just right in its own environment. And if we could get to that, I think that'd be terrific. You know, moving in that direction, we are setting up a network on the farm, you know, which makes, of course, cameras and any kind of sensor equipment more, more feasible. We're a long way from plant by plant, but you know, that's the first step, I think, or else we wouldn't be doing it. Uh, it's hard to put a timetable on things because it, it does depend on cost, uh, which depends on policy and, you know, of course, just the technological advancements. But yeah, I can definitely see it. In fact, I was going to jokingly say that's the worst thing about the computer age is I don't get to do the fun jobs like tractor driving nearly as much as I used to. <laughs> um, you know, you're more at a spreadsheet or staring at a phone, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I think autonomous is definitely the way of the future, but exactly when it will become mainstream, I don't have an answer for that.